Hello and welcome to the Critic Cuculus on a Monk and today we're doing a video for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This video is talking about attributes and why you shouldn't ignore them and what you should be looking at when it comes to actually leveling them up. And if this is the kind of content that you're looking for, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It seriously helps us reach a new audience and helps these videos grow. And of course, the more people involved in the community, it means we get more information out there to help people have fun. Anyway, let's actually get into the video. Now, when it comes to attributes, you acquire them for leveling up. Now, there's different ways and different things that you can do in order to level up in this game. You yourself can level up. You can earn skills for certain things. You can earn focus points as well. And then, of course, you have got those attribute points. And attribute points are earned every four levels. Now, levels are not unlimited in this game and so they are kind of limited so you actually have to think a little bit carefully or more carefully about what it is that you're going to be popping these on because you're not going to be filling every single bar and completing every single list in this game it's simply not going to happen um, you don't have enough attribute points in order to do that and let me explain so as you probably know by now, you can get up to level 300 in almost every single skill here. For instance, one-handed weaponry, throwing, smithing, all of it. You're going to need five focus points at least in order to, you know, get them and do that. But just having that doesn't mean you're going to be able to level up if you don't have the bandwidth in order to do so. For that, you're going to need points um, into your attributes. And ahead of us, we have six attributes to pick from. We have Vigor, Control, Endurance, Cunning, Social, and Intelligence. All of these being just as important as any other one, depending on how you want to control your character. And so a massive part of this is thinking about how you want to roleplay and how you actually want to play this game because you're not going to be able to outstat everything in the game. If we look at Vigor, for instance, Vigor controls our one-handed weaponry, our two-handed weaponry, and our pole arms, along with control, controlling our bows, our crossbows, and our throwing. Now, my advice to you is to pick a weapon. Being good at bows certainly helps because, you know, when you're surrounded by 10 looters, you can probably pick them all off if you're actually good with a bow. But I would also pick a melee weapon or you know, prioritize a melee weapon over a bow or vice versa. Pole arms are kind of essential, but I would only recommend popping a point into it if you're going to be only using it, you know, as a last resort. I mean, you know, when you're on horseback, having those pole arms absolutely will help you long game. But if you're not going to specialize in it, I wouldn't waste too many points into that. But taking Vigor up to, say, a 6 will see you a long way into the game, especially if, you know, or vice versa, do that for control. If you want to go for the ranged option, again, popping it up to 6 is a will take you a very, very long way into the game. Endurance for me is the most important stat in a game. In endurance, you have riding and athletics. This is going to be athletics is, for instance, if you're going to be entering tournaments, if you're going to be sieging castles, you know, it's going to be how fast you actually manage to maneuver on the board. And you're going to want points into this. And in order to get good points, you're going to want a high endurance. And again, for riding, if you want to be riding the best horses in the game, well, then you're going to need a high endurance in order to be able to acquire those horses. And again, when it comes to smithing and wanting to get that, you know, that legendary smith and getting all 300 points or 275 points um, into smithing, then not only are you going to need the five focus points, but you're also going to need the eight points of endurance. If you don't have that, you're not going to be able to reach the end goal. Cunning is another useful one. Scouting is very, very useful for avoiding bandits, for tracking down enemy armies or even avoiding enemy armies. And again, tactics is another very, very useful one for knowing if you're going to win a battle. If you want to send your troops in, the higher your tactics rating, um, the more easily you're going to be able to win that. But I'd only ever have, say, four points in Cunning. 
When it comes to social, however, social is another extremely important one. Again, when it comes to trade, and if you wanted to, for instance, buy your first castle, you're going to need a lot of points into that, and therefore you're going to need the eight points in social. That will also get you extremely high up in leadership and charm, both very, very useful um, skills. And lastly, that brings us to intelligence. And within this, you have stewardship, probably the most important um, skill to be looking at, because in my opinion, um, although medicine and engineering are important, they are stats and skills that you can have on companions. And therefore, you don't need to take that under your control. Having a high intelligence means having a better stewardship. Stewardship is a great way to earn um earn a bigger troop size but i would probably only pop this up to six maximum when it comes to your attribute points it really is about understanding how you plan on playing the game and planning ahead for that if you want to be an absolute tank on the on the battlefield then picking high vigor picking high endurance high control for that bowmanship is going to come in real real handy if you want to be an unlimited trader, then you're going to have to have points into social, eight points into social to have those level 300 in trade. And if you plan to make all of your money through smithing, then again, having that high endurance is going to be what you need. But moreover, if you want to be riding around, you know, the battlefield on the biggest, baddest horse in the game, then having high endurance means you're actually going to be able to do this. So picking a combat method, having high endurance and having high social is the way to go if you ask me. Remember, guys, you do get limited attribute points, so just plan accordingly. But that's my video on attribute points. I hope this quick rundown of what they do and what they mean later into the game has helped you out. Remember, this is just a beginner's guide. You know, I understand that if you've got many hours in this game or if you have been playing already on um, PC, then you probably know all this information. But a lot of people are starting this brand new up on console. And so I figured it'd be a good idea to go through this information once again. If anyone's stuck on anything or I didn't quite explain anything enough, let me know down in the comments i do my very best to either answer you in the comments or you know invite you to the discord i do have an active and growing discord the link for it is in the description and it's the probably the easiest way for us to actually have a long chat about the game and you know uh, talking about the finer mechanics within it but i've been a monk we've been a critic and i will see you in the next video real soon until then take it easy and happy gaming